So growing up, I think I always took the river for granted. It was always there. As much as people say it's a boom and bust system, yeah, it has its highs and lows, but the river was there. And now that I've grown up and got more involved with water and everything, it's really hard to see what's going on and the fact that people are losing their livelihoods. And it just sometimes makes me question, do I have a future here? If this is what's gonna keep happening, and especially with some of the proposed changes in the Menindee Lakes and things like that, which is gonna hold a lot less water, I really question whether farming out here, which has been going on for a couple hundred years, is going to be viable anymore at all. And I think you see as well, you know, the, the wealth that came out of this region. I mean, this homestead alone is just absolutely incredible. And so it's been going on sustainably for a really long time. And for now, the fact that it's probably going to be destroyed is really hard. And you know that it hasn't always been like this. I mean, well, can you just up the river was the fourth largest port in Australia. They easily got paddle boat steamers up here. Yeah, they sometimes had dry times where they got stuck, but they usually did get them up. And that's why one of the largest ports was in the inland of Australia. So in other parts of Australia, you have things like the Great Artesian Basin and things. We don't actually have that out here. What we have is aquifers that are recharged by the river. And so when the rivers go dry, we actually have big issues with salinity uptake and things into our aquifers. And it means that not only when they take away our river, do we not have water, but would they also destroy our aquifers and the other things, the other only other option we have to feed our stock and bathe in and everything as well. So it's really hard to see what they're doing because it is having bigger effects underground that we can't even see. I think the hard thing is, I mean, we're just the forgotten few out here, but it is a lot bigger than just this little stretch of river where there's about 20 or 30 families. I mean, this is gonna have huge effects for the entire basin um, around Australia. I mean, with fish breeding, huge in Indy lakes, it's gonna have effects on the Murray. And the other thing is they've put this pipeline in from the Murray to Broken Hill. So now not only have they destroyed our river, but they're gonna start sucking more and more out of the Murray, which I think I just urge to everyone my own age and you know, even that aren't, this is a serious issue. And once we destroy this area, it's gonna be destroyed for a long time. And we're not gonna get it back at all. Simply, it's over allocation and mismanagement of our lake systems. Um, so over allocation over the years has just, the irrigation that's gone up in the top of the basin has just continued to skyrocket. Um, and it's gotten to a point now, it's really quite unsustainable and also mismanagement. So we're below the Menindee Lakes. And so in theory, we're a managed system and we've had our lakes drained twice in four years. Um, and that mismanagement has really destroyed what's going, um, what's happening along the Lower Darling. But it is um, an incredible system. And if we fight back now and um, we can make changes and we can fix what's happened. I mean, people's lives are being affected. You look at Wilcannia, um, you know, just up river. They have the lowest life expectancy in Australia. I think it's one of the lowest in the world. It's 38 for males and 42 for females. And it's a known fact that when there's no water in the river, the crime rate of Wilcannia goes up and the life expectancy goes down. So this is having a much bigger issue than just primary production and things like that. This is lives that we're losing because a Royal Commission isn't being called. So I just really hope he stands up and sees the damage that's being done. But the fact that now is his chance to fix it. And as the leader of Australia, we really do need him to stand up and do it. It's got nothing to do with, you know, drought or anything like that. It's the water's being taken further up and used for other things like irrigation. And the people down here are the ones that are suffering. I mean, we've got irrigation too, like, you know, down the river, they've got irrigation there. We're purely stock and domestic, but we need that water too. And you'd think that people's needs and stock and domestic would be put before short-term plantations. Um, but sadly it's not, it's not how it's being managed at the moment. And I think we really need a change in the way that water's managed to make sure that the things that need it to survive are put before crops like cotton and things like that, which you don't really need to like keep things going. I mean, we're gonna have serious deaths. Last time the river went dry, we had we saw kangaroos dying from drinking the blue green algae pools of like water that was left in the river. Like it's, it has big effects. I mean, kids down at Poonkeri are getting skin irritations as well from the water. It's, in my opinion, you put people and animals before crops. And that's what I think we really need to push. And I think in theory, the rules were set up to be like that. Stock and domestic comes before um, plantations, but in reality, it's not getting done that way. You know, and we talk a lot out here about the potential of hemp being grown. I mean, it uses a lot less water. It uses less pesticides and everything like that. It's a better fiber 
and it really should be starting to get used because cotton is just it's water thirsty it uses a lot of pesticides and insecticides and everything like that um, so you know we just hope that a more sustainable crop like hemp can be brought in in the future um, and used because for Australia it's a lot better suited I mean you're irrigating a plant like cotton in the driest inhabited continent and you're taking the water from the top so those below you are suffering and that's what's really hard to um, wrap your head around sometimes you're just like why aren't we getting looked after why are we the at the bottom of the system why are we the ones that are getting affected and the thing is it's not it's going to be more than us I mean you look at you know below Burke everyone's been suffering so it's just going to get higher and higher as irrigation and think of things like cotton and other crops increases further up so we're working with a lot of people, we're working from irrigators up at Menindi, we're working with um, the Barkindji people, we're working from people down lower like than us on the Darling. And what I find really sad as well is growing up Menindi was an incredible town. You'd go in and, you know, because they, yeah, you can still see all the drippers, they had really quite sustainable irrigation um, and huge grape production. I mean, you'd go to the, the supermarket and Menindi grapes, they were all from here. Today, not anymore. Menindi has been destroyed. It's turned into um, a much smaller town than it was. Um, huge unemployment. It, growing up, it was an amazing town. And because of um, irrigation that's gone on further up, they could no longer irrigate here at all because for the plants that they were growing, it was too salty. So I've watched, in my lifetime, an entire town be destroyed and I don't want to see that happen anymore. And that's why we're really standing by everyone in Menindi that's left. Um, and hopefully we can get it back to what it was one day. My friends, our river is like our blood our old people used to share with us. Without our blood, we die. Without our river, we die. The river is important. The river is us. The river is our identification as river people. Without our river, we lose our identification as river people. My friends, the river is the community. Without that community, the river, the outside one won't exist. We need this river to be a community.